Hey, how y'all doing? Welcome to my channel. Today I'll be doing a video on Hylian Holdings, my conviction on it, and why I invested into it. And I'm just also list some disadvantages and advantages to the company and to the stock. So I want to start off by saying I'm not a financial advisor. There are risks. Be sure to do your own due diligence before investing. So the Hylian share price as of this recording was $9.29. The market cap was one point six one billion. So I have a very small position. I own fifty seven shares at twelve dollars and twelve cent cost basis, which that's what I'm willing to risk. You should only invest what what you're willing to risk. So I I plan to get up to a hundred shares. By the beginning of 2022, which I'm working towards, I'm trying to dollar cost average and everything. But for me, 57 shares is a good position. I started investing last year, right before the pandemic. And I think that that's pretty good for me. And I know a lot of y'all out there, y'all got uh, within the thousands of shares. This this is good. This is good for me right now. I'm gonna get there, but um, so I'm gonna just talk about, just read off some information, and at the end I'm gonna uh, give my thoughts, uh, price prediction, and just my opinions. So the CEO is Thomas Healy, of course. If you know anything about Healy, and they're headquartered in Austin, Texas. So they filed, from what I read, about 27 patents total, mainly in automotive technologies, truck manufacturers, and energy conservation. Now I'm going to talk about the Q1 earnings. So the actual earnings were negative 10 cents, which they beat by 42.86%. The expected earnings were negative 18 cents. The revenue expectations were met, which were, they didn't have any revenue. So... They installed about 10 additional Hypertruck ERX powertrain units. The Excuse goal me, y'all. I meant the hybrid units. To install, I think I heard about 300 units by the total by the end of the 2021, which I could be wrong. But they've installed 30 hybrid units total now. They hired about 43 new employees. And they have about 91 employees total now. So they recognize no new revenue in qu quarter one of 2021. So now I'm going to just go through some significant dates. So I'm going to try not to read off everything, only the significant things that happened this year with Hylion in 2021. So on February 24th of this year, Hylion chose Peterbilt to test the chassis for the hybrid. And they're going to be using the, the chassis for Peterbilt. On April 16th of this year, they announced the Hypertruck Innovation Council, which Healy has put a lot of emphasis on because it's very important. They're going to be working to, to build sustainable future of top fleets to help with the development of the hypertruck. It's going to be crucial. So, the council members include Peterbilt, Riders, Penske, ANG, GPL, Anheuser Busch, NFI, Wegmans, Warner, Ryan, and Agility. And they're going to be among the first to drive the Hypertruck ERX units. And they're going to be crucial with helping with the path to commercialization, which is big. Hylion puts emphasis on these two companies. They're pretty big companies. I'm sure you've heard of them. If, you, if not, you've probably seen them on the highway. So Hylion delivered its first units to Peterbilt. Pretty sure this was in Q1. And they were demo fleets. So the range of the Hypertruck ERX they're claiming is about a thousand plus miles. Yeah, I don't know any other 
electric vehicle that's achieving a thousand plus miles or anything even close to that that I could think of on the market today and especially not in the uh, sector that Hylion is in. Wait. So the first revenue from the hybrid is expected to come in the second half of this year. A lot of catalysts coming in the second half of this year and the first half of next year. So, And as you can see from this timeline, Hylion is right on track with their estimates. And everything is looking good. It's all going according to plan. Just name off some more. Hybrid scale-ups are going to be in the second half of this year. And they're working with the mod centers to help with that. The customer deliveries are expected to start at the beginning of next year. So I'm going to talk about the battery. The the Hylion battery is less resource intensive. And it's 20 of the size of a conventional ion truck battery. And plus it costs less. Hylion will be mainly focusing on improving the electric generator opposed to just the battery, which is it's kind of interesting because a lot of companies, whereas they would go after improving the battery, he's going after the thing that powers the battery. I heard him state in his recent interview, which is, which is pretty cool because he says throughout all of the models, the battery is going to remain kind of the same and the generator is going to steadily improve. They're going to improve the generator. So they plan to launch an improvement of the hybrid system in the second half of this year. So Hylion provides one gigabyte of data for truck for truck owners and fleet managers the one gigabyte of data tells them information about the truck, road conditions, routes, locations, etc. So this is very important for the truck owners, the fleet managers, and just everybody because it helps them know the, the, the safety of the driver, the safety and, and how functional the truck, and they could kind of pinpoint different problems with the truck. This is some pretty cool futuristic technology that Hylion has going and I think it would be very helpful so this is a little thing that I do with all the earnings calls of the company I, I own I rate them usually out of five stars so I rated Hylion's qu quarter one earnings call three out of five stars and I did that because it was just all right to me. Um, it was they didn't have the best quarter. Like mainly for me, it was just the ten additional hyper truck units. I expected uh, a a good amount more, considering they they want a certain amount by the end of the year. So it was that. The the fact that they didn't have any revenue wasn't too big for me, but that did play a part. Um, and they beat on earnings, which is good, and that that played a part as well. And to keeping it kind of three stars is pretty good. Three three stars is not not bad. I think they're going through their growing pains right now. Like every company starting up has their growing pains. And Hylion, they're early on in their life cycle. It's a high-growth company. I believe it'll get better, especially further on down the line. I think the second quarter will be better. That's, that's what I believe. And speaking of second quarter, Hylion schedules the second quarter financial conference call and webcast for August 11th. So stay tuned and... Go to their website. We register for that. So we move on to the actual second quarter. On May 20th, Detmar Logistics Oil, gas-based company, plans to fully electrify its fleet over the next five years, and it chose Hylion. And this is a big deal because it's an oil, oil company transitioning to EVs, and they're also choosing Hylion. 
So this is some more potential revenue. So Detmar has placed an initial order of 10 hybrid trucks. So Hollyard has electrified 100 plus trucks over the next five years. So here's a little bit about Detmar. They own about 127 trucks in their fleet, and they haul over 200 loads of fracking sand every day. They're a leader in propet logistics and delivery. Back to Hylion, they're going to be expanding their facility to hold 500 plus employees. So they've been aggressively hiring, like Thomas has stated. They're going to be redoing everything, like the office space, the place where the ERX trucks are made, everything. And they're going to be adding a, a few things like a gaming, a gaming room. This is what I heard, and a gym. And a dining room as well. And I was especially excited about the gym because I like to work out myself. Like, I like, uh, I've been working out for a, a long time, and I believe exercise is important. It's important for, and it plays the roles in other aspects of your life. And it could help with productivity and just the overall happiness of the employees, keep them satisfied, keep them healthy, you know. I believe more facilities should incorporate exercise or put gyms in their facilities if they can. That's just my opinion. Also in the second quarter, Hylion stock was included in the Russell 2000 and 3000 indexes. So, so on July 15th, which was the other day, FEV selected Hylion as their partner in a long-term agreement, electrified Class 8 truck development. So here's another partner to add to their very long list of partners. So the FEV support design, they're going to be support design, development, integration, and production for the Hypertruck ERX. So a little bit about FEV. It's the world-class leader in vehicle and powertrain development for hardware and software. And they're shaping the industry with efficient, carbon-neutral, safe transportation. So this article recently just came out on July 28th. It states that Hylion had announced the long-range version of the Hypertruck ERX targeting zero-emission vehicle credits. So this this is just another another milestone. It Like, if you read the article, it states that... Um, they have 75 miles of all electric and then more than a thousand miles of the total range at the product launch. And Hylion is just moving forward one, one step at a time and you see it. Here's all of the awards. Excuse me. I'm not going to read them, but they all are here. I got them straight from the Hylion website. So I'm going to talk about my final thoughts and opinions. And just tell you why I invested. So Thomas Healy is a big reason why I invested. He's a young, innovative CEO. He's, from what I've seen, he's humble, he's passionate, he's well-spoken, he's down to earth. What I mean by he's down to earth, like I see him interacting. And he doesn't have to do this. He interacts with his fans and his investors. I see him on social media. He's very in tune with what's going on. Um... He shows his comical side, which I like from a CEO because you don't have to be serious all the time. He knows when to play and when to get down to business. So some things that I found out about him, like, like, which I think is funny, like he likes to eat at Taco Bell. I found out what he likes to order on the, on the menu. And as well as I just watched a recent interview. They tried to put. It's his dog named Thomas. It's actually in the series Truck Talks Part 4. If you've seen the video already, you know what I'm talking about. It's his dog named Thomas that they had in the office, and they was trying to put the dog up in the chair. And I thought, I thought that was pretty funny. And I think he's doing a good job. Like, I think he took a great approach with the Hylion company. Like, he went the SPAC route, which was genius because... It got them the market in a short amount of time, and it got them the capital that they needed to begin to raise funds through their stock. Another reason why I invested because Thomas went after the powertrain instead of the full truck, 
which allowed truck drivers to keep their truck that they love. And it also allowed Hylion to make the powertrain for less dollars instead of making the full truck, which would have cost them a lot more. So, in the future, I predict they'll be get into autonomy. They could possibly sell the, te the Hylion tech to other companies, branch into different markets. And with that could come government contracts and grants. And they also so, could potentially accept crypto in the future. That that could be another advantage. Like, when Thomas Healy was asked about Dogecoin, he didn't exactly say no. He said, um, who knows? But the possibilities are endless when it comes to Hylion. I think Thomas Healy is, strikes me as a person that's open to trying new things, new ideas, just to see just to see what would have happened try things in a different perspective now i'm gonna list some of the company advantages so they have the first mover advantage low competition right now i can't think of any other company that's doing it at the level that highly is doing there's it. a time where you could have made a case for tesla and nikola but tesla isn't focused on their semi and Nikola, we already know what happened with that. So there's no real competition right now. I, if you ask me, I couldn't, I couldn't name another one that's doing it like this. So they have already built out infrastructure, and that's big, especially saving on money because they have they use renewable natural gas (RNG), and that's widely available today. So. This source for fuel, they, 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 they're already, they're, there's already trucks on the road. Like if, if you live in Texas and you live in the Austin area, you've probably seen Hylion trucks on the road. Like they have a big advantage over any other EV in that sector. And a lot of EVs in general, a lot of EVs don't have the infrastructure built out, which they have to wait and wait. They have to wait and wait years to get the infrastructure built out, and they stay stagnant. They ain't doing nothing, really. Um, and they already have it, which is, I think that's a big thing. They don't get enough credit for that. Having the infrastructure also allows Hylion to save big on money. So the trucks can generate power on board to charge the electric battery and that's cheaper than charging on the grid that's something different so they could charge the battery in only eight minutes so that there is astounding like i heard thomas Healy say 10 minutes eight minutes 10 minutes it doesn't make a big difference it's, it's a short amount of time and that's incredible so a truck driver can pull up to the um rest stop or resting station and he could pull out his sandwich uh, whether it's subway or 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 a mcdonald's big mac sandwich i don't know i don't know what they be eating <laughs> but by the time he finishes his meal his truck could be fully charged and ready to go that, that's convenient for them i think that, that that's great like he'd be ready to hit the road and head to his next stop so the battery is incredibly small. It's only 20th the size of a regular battery, and it's less resource intensive because of that. So Healy listed just how the hypertruck tech will evolve over the coming years. So he listed into three steps. So step one is the ERX, step two is the fuel agnostic, and step three is the hydrogen fuel cell. So like I said before, it currently uses RNG and like you literally cannot get much better than renewable natural gas it's one of the most abundant resources on the planet like it literally comes from animal and human waste things like cow manure things that you can find just about anywhere and that's why it, it, it's so smart for using it and it's the future and they're also using it in a smart way it's gonna be capable of using hydrogen in the future and I potentially could think they could do that even better than Nikola. That's just my opinion. Uh, 
they they're gonna have such a an advantage. Like advantages in their sector, like with infrastructure, cost savings with the fleets, as well as hiring new employees, finding intelligent workers that want to help um, cure the world of pollution, like help help better their environment. And they feel like they're doing this through Hylion. And Thomas Hilly states that he's been hiring nonstop and they have no trouble finding employees that want to work. And that's that's a great thing. They have a lot of potential. They're going to be able to achieve carbon negatives. That's unheard of. Where it's actually better for you to drive their trucks than to not drive them. It's better for the environment. So it's a huge cost savings for fleets and truck drivers using the Hylion compared to diesel engines. Lower total cost of ownership. Like Healy was saying, um, it was able to cut their learning curve through the hybrid for the Hypertruck ERX systems. So they're, they're able to implement their ideas from the, the hybrid into the Hypertruck ERX, which is gonna make it overall better and accelerate the growth. A big, big thing for fleets. They're buying these trucks, they want to say. Fleets are gonna be looking for the cheapest option while still getting that quality that they want. They want the full bang for their book when they're buying trucks. And I think Hylion is that. And that's attractive to fleets. That's going to play a big part into the coming future of them getting, getting more partners and just getting more orders. The fact that the, the savings are a big thing. So another thing that Healy brought to my attention that it solves the problem of diesel trucks they have with siphoning fuel they said he said you can't really siphon natural gas which i didn't know that and the fact that hylion erx trucks fix the problem of fuel siphoning that saves the fleets a lot of money as well that's another advantage so another obvious thing is the multiple partnerships these are all advantages as you seen me list earlier this they have so many partners like it's crazy Like, I can't name any other company that's at this stage that has as many partners. Yeah, if y'all can name any other company that's around the size of Hylion that has as many partners, list it in the comments below. I'm interested in hearing it because I can't think of one. Healy's really trying to make sure he does his thing right before he brings it to market. And he brings it to market, you know, in the right fashion. So I think that's good. Um, so I got a list of disadvantages of the company. So obviously there's no revenue recognition at the moment. They're burning through cash. And the cash is not expected until the second half. So if you are really uncomfortable with the fact that they're losing cash, then this probably is not the company for you. If, if you don't care about that type of thing, then... You should go do your due diligence first, your research, and then decide if it's right for you and then invest. But um, another disadvantage, which I think a disadvantage, is the non-binding pre-orders. Halion says there's no penalty for cancellation. So, which means they could cancel at any time the pre-orders that Halion already has. So, the thousand... Agility truck pre-orders can be canceled if they want to cancel them. Like, Hylion's not going to stop them. And the price of the Hylion stock could be uh, a, a penny stock. It could go back to, like, you never know. So, th those are risks to could take into consideration before investing in this company or any other company that's like this early on. It's a high risk, high reward stock. So just be mindful. Like some stock advantages, the fact that it's massively undervalued is $9, especially compared to companies like Nikola and uh, similar mar market cap to Ride, Lower Style Motors. Like, I don't got to say too much about that. I, I don't think that they should be trading the same, considering Hylion has done more than both of those. 
but that's a whole other topic. Um, they have a lot of upside potential, more upside than downside. In my opinion, it's one of the best EV investments in the market. There's only a handful, and this is one of them. Like, I can't name too many on the market that I really, really like. Like, I've, I've done my research. There's not too, too many. Like, I, I could say maybe CCIV. Excuse me, y'all. It's Lucid Motors. I forgot they just merged. I can name, um, of course, Neo and Tesla. They're like the big dogs in this space. But Like, um, Fisker is all right. They have their vehicle, the Ocean, started production in 2022. But it's just not the investment for me. I'm going to stick with Hylion. It's not, it's not too many. It's definitely not too many. Um... I'm a long-term investor, and this is just long-term investing. I think that's the best approach. Like, I don't think it's a good idea to be trading in and out of this. I'm not a trader. Like, you can potentially lose money, but that's another discussion. So if you've done your research and you feel like this company is right for you, get in while it's still low. Like I said, it's high risk, high reward. And you lower your risk through research. So do your research. Now I'm going to just get my price prediction. And as you can see, the short volume is up over 14%. See, it was at 20 million. Now it's at 23, a little over 23 million. So it's due for a short squeeze as well. And the, the shorts are going to get absolutely crushed on this. Like the short interest is the highest it's been since April. And it's been steadily rising. Like, when this thing really does short squeeze, it's really going to take off. I predict this price can be easily over $100 within the next five years or so. Easily. Like, there, there's no way that it's not trading over $100. I am subject to being wrong. Like, it doesn't have to go, but this is just my opinion. So, this is just my growth portfolio with Fidelity. As you see, I have five positions. I got 57 shares, 57.6. And I got it at a $12.12 cost basis. About $700, close to it. Invested. That's good for me right now. But as you see, it's my second largest position. Tattoo Chef is the biggest. Um, but I, I really like Fidelity. Um... Like, I like the whole interface. I like how professional and clean it looks. Uh, some people say you pay a little bit more for the, the actual trades. But, I mean, I don't mind that for the quality that you get. Like, I, could, I like the fact that I can call them up whenever and ask them just, just ask them what that, whatever about the platform, and they're going to respond to me, and they're going to keep it professional. Like, you can't call every every brokerage up like this. Like, I like the fact. Like, I, I can do that with Robinhood. Um, like, whenever another, like, I switched from Robinhood to Fidelity, and they they charge me a trans transfer fee, and Fidelity reimbursed me that, like no problem. Like they're not sponsoring me or nothing, <laughs> but they're a good brokerage. Like I like little things like <laughs> like it say, um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Chris. I like I like little things like that. So. That plays a little part, and I like the little background. You know, you see like the city in the background. You see your your, your markets, the Dow Jones, the S and P. You see all that when you, on your homepage. So I like little things like that. But I just want to say again that I'm not a financial advisor. There are risks. Be sure to do your own due diligence before investing, as always. Thank y'all for watching. 
If y'all like stuff like this, show me some love by dropping a like and subscribing to the channel. And just drop drop me some feed, feedback a little. Just telling me your thoughts of the video, what I need to improve on. Like, I'm, I'm open to the good and the bad. So just let me know what you think. We could just, we could talk about it. Let, let me know your position and why you invested. Also, let me know if I misspell any words or messed up on any information. I apologize. I just want to say thank y'all again for watching. I love y'all. Have a great day. I'll talk to y'all later.